I'm a huge open source advocate. I love open source software. I love free software. And I wanted to share that with uh, you guys for the ones that are interested. Um, I posted a video a few years ago about Rocket Chat and, and another one about um, another chat software that I'll do another video on later called Mattermost. And I didn't realize at the time that I'd had so many hits in, in the last few years, so I guess people were pretty interested in it. I don't know if that interest is still out there, but for me it is. I, I really like Rocket Chat a, a lot. Um, so when you're looking for Slack alternatives or Microsoft Teams alternatives, um, you know, options that are out there for a team collaboration tool, that is exactly what Rocket Chat is. Um, so I want to go through that with you and, and just show you how easy it is to get it set up. So originally when you come to the Rocket Chat site, it's just rocket.chat. It, it brings you here to this page and you can download um, and install their server and they've got information on how to do that. So we'll jump over there in a minute. You know, if you keep kind of going down, they tell you about things, you know, replace email. This is a great concept. I've used Slack and Teams for a few years now um, in, my, in my professional life, so I have not been able to replace email yet. People just use email far too much to, to ever replace it. Now, that being said, there are some nice tools out there that we'll get into um, that can let you connect your email to your chat system and actually create a channel for your email. So it does make it where you can kind of do your email and your chat from a single application, which is pretty nice. Um, team chat, obviously, that's the whole purpose is to have team communication. And then what is Rocket Chat? So you can watch a little video that they've made, um, you know, universe of possibilities. I believe this because it's, it's open source software. They've got hundreds of thousands of developers working on things. They've got people who are working on different features and different bugs to fix those bugs quickly. So you get a lot of fixes very rapidly, which is nice. Um, you can see here that it's been forked 5.1 thousand times. Um, you know, the star rating on GitHub is 23.7 thousand. That's, that's pretty high. Um, that's a lot of people who really like this solution. Uh, so it should tell you something about the solution as well. Um, there's lots of features and, and we can get into those, uh, you know, later on, but there, there's mobile apps. So there's live chat, there's real time translation, um, you know, for all platforms, which is great because I'm a Linux guy myself. I use Windows and Mac in my professional world, but I love Linux when I'm at home. Mac, Mac is definitely a, a top favorite as well. And, and iOS, I use uh, far more than Android, but uh, I'm, I'm not a huge Windows guy. I'll, I'll use it for work, but that's just not my preferred platform in my own time. Um, there's tons of customization, so they if they say endless customization. That's probably pretty accurate. It's it's pretty amazing how much you can change on Rocket Chat. So I want to move on to basically the install. When you go to the install section, um, there will there will be several things. So first is desktop apps. So it detects what system I'm on. It tells me here you go. Um, they have the Debian and they have the RPM for um, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, those kind of uh, systems that, that use RPM. Um, there's also Windows executables and Mac packages from the Mac App Store or direct download, either way. Um, the Linux version is the one that I would want, so, so I've already downloaded it and, and I'll install it here in a little bit. Um, mobile apps, so they do have the iOS app and the Android app and they have set up so that you can basically get push notifications almost out of the box. There's, you're not having to rebuild the app. Now, if you want to have your own server disconnected completely from Rocket Chat, um, then you do have to enable, um, you, have to, you have to rebuild these apps basically under your own signing certificates and things like that. So you'd want a developer who at least knows how to do that much and, and get those things set up so you can have push notifications. But um, really, it, it, the, the way they set it up to be able to be federated with their own server is pretty nice. So server installation. So you see here, they've got all kinds of options. I mean. You can do Docker, you can do Ubuntu, you can do AWS, you can do Debian, you can do Red Hat, you can do Oracle. I mean, just on and on and on down here. So, so lots of options. They have Rocket Chat Cloud, which is which is a nice offering. So, if you're looking at this as a professional in in a business or a company as an option, um, it's definitely worth a look. Believe me. Uh, but sometimes you don't want to support something yourself. If you're an IT professional and you feel like you've got the bandwidth to support a, a team collaboration system like this. Um, go for it. This is it's super easy. Once you've got it set up, it, it really kind of runs itself, and you just need to check in on it. But if you're if you're someone who's an IT expert and you'd rather have someone else run this for you, then then Rocket Chat offers that. You should definitely go out there and look, and, and see what they have to offer because Rocket Chat Cloud is is awesome. Um, these guys have a lot of options. So if we go look at the pricing page here briefly, you can see there's there's community, so you can get this for free. This is the one that I'm going to install today. Um, there's Pro. Okay, so you can get pro support and, and pro level um, access at $3 per user per month, which is quite affordable. 
Um, and then there's enterprise, so you can call, you know, you can contact them and find out what what kind of pricing there is. It's tiered pricing, volume discounts, all kinds of things involved in that, and they tell you what you get. So I'm just going to scroll through. It's something that we can look at some other time, but um, you get a lot of extras when you pay for these things, which is expected, right? You're, you're paying, so you get a little bit more. Um, but the the open source version is is absolutely more than usable, especially out of the box um, for small teams, medium sized teams, even um, large teams, depending on your needs. But this is this is definitely the one that we're going to do today. So I'm going to go back to the install page, and we're going to go down here, and I'm going to click on Ubuntu, and it'll bring us to the manual installation for Ubuntu, which this is not hard to follow. Um, it really doesn't take any effort to to go through and do these things. Um, it's very fast actually so if you have your own server and it's already set up and you want to do that um, feel free to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go over and I'm going to use um, this PAS version that they have up here so I just need to find it right here PAS deployments and then I'm going to click on DigitalOcean so they have all of these options for deployments right out to these different server systems that are that are offered out on the cloud um, I'm a DigitalOcean user I, I really like DigitalOcean a lot um, I'll put a link to DigitalOcean if you'd like to sign up and you haven't already. Um, if you click on that link, you'll get $50 of credit, I believe, uh, for the first 30 days. So um, at the size server that we'll be using, it's $10 is what I'm going to pick. So you can set up five different servers in the first 30 days for free just to try them out. And the great thing about it is you set up the server, you try it out. If you don't like it, you destroy it. And they don't even charge you the full $10. They will charge you for the amount of time that you had the server set up. Um, so it's, it's really pretty awesome. I mean, it's, it's pennies per minute, and I'm less than that probably. So, so I really like DigitalOcean. So I'm going to click on DigitalOcean. It's going to say right here, create a droplet. This is what they call a virtual server in their system. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me to the login page. And it's going to go right into my account. I'm already signed in. And it's going to pick everything that I need. So I'm going to go up here and show you this. And you'll see Rocket Chat's already highlighted. But DigitalOcean is, is amazing just because look at all of these uh, one-click install servers that they've got. So all of the things that you might have tried to do manually or you might be seeing videos on how to do it manually, you might come here and look and see, do they have what I want in a one-click install? Because really, all you do is do what I, what I just did, except from this page you would do it. So, so here they have Discourse. This is a really nice forum type software. Um, it's got some really great layout. You see this a lot on all kinds of different websites uh, out on the internet today. Um, so they've got uh, Docker, they've got Django, they've got GitLab. This is an amazing uh, system that you can set up for yourself to run your own Git server that's similar to GitHub. And I, I have GitLab running on my own. It's, it's amazing and I love it. I use it constantly. Um, I mean, just so many different things that, that you can do here. So Mattermost, we'll cover this one later. Um, it's a really nice one. Zulip is way down here at the bottom. It's another chat server that I'll cover as well. Um, WordPress, if you've just been wanting to start a WordPress blog and you weren't sure about installing and setting up WordPress, you click here, you, you pick the server stuff that we're about to go through together, and and you're off and running with WordPress. I mean, there's just so much here that you can do. But So uh, we'll go with Rocket Chat. You can see here that it's highlighted. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with Standard. They do have some other options here for, for different types of performance. I'm just going to stay with Standard for this. Now, you see they automatically selected the $40 a month. Just, just notice there's this arrow here, so I'm going to click it, and I'm going to go over here and click the $10 a month. The $5 a month might work, but I'm not sure that it will. Um, I've got some of my own apps built on the same stack that, that uh, Rocket Chat's built on, and, and I have a hard time getting them to compile and start the first time, so that's why I'm picking the $10 version, um, just, just because I know this one will work. But you can actually do a lot with this $5 server, and I use several of these uh, for multiple sites that I've got running. Um, so this is actually a more powerful server than you would think uh, because it's SSDs. Um, you just have to watch your transfer rate and, and how much disk space you get, but this is a perfectly usable server. So down here, if you're doing this for production, if you, if you say, yep, I want that more expensive server, awesome. But just notice that in production, you're going to want to check this box for backups. It does cost you a little bit for those backups, but it's more than worth it to have it just in case something happens. Uh, block storage, so if you have a ton of media that you're planning on storing, you would you'd want to connect up block storage. I'm not going to go into how that works today, but we will. Um, this already has New York selected. I'll click New York 1. Um, I'm right in the center of the U.S., so depending on where you're at, you might want to pick a server that's a little closer to you geographically. Um, so I could pick San Francisco just as easily. It doesn't really matter. New York, San Francisco, they're both really close. Um, I may be just as close to Toronto, honestly. I, I, 
just depending on where you find the servers that they've got. So if you're in Germany, you might want, you might want Frankfurt. If you're in England, you want London, obviously. So, so pick one that's close to you geographically just to, to cut down on latency. So here you can do private networking, IPv6, user data, um, and, and monitoring. So these are all options that you can add on. Nothing I'm going to do right now, but they are there. Um, finally, SSH keys. This is really important. So I do have SSH keys set up. Um, my public keys and private keys are, are already stored here, and you can see a few of them. Um, but I'm actually going to do this one today, um, the password. So if you have the chance to do SSH keys, you should. And, and I'll go through that in a different tutorial about how to set up SSH keys. It's also free. It just takes a little bit of knowledge on how to do it. So we'll do the one-time password. They'll send this to me an email, and, and I'm going to call this... Um, just rocket chat test server. You can you can name this anything you want. If you have a domain name that you're going to forward to this server, so it's rocketchat.mycompany.com. Um, you would you might want to put that here just just to make it make things a little bit easier. Um, but you would still need to go forward your DNS. Don't misunderstand what this does. This is just a label in the in the DigitalOcean system. You can type tags so that if you have lots and lots and lots of servers maybe you run a business where you set up servers for people on DigitalOcean and you're man and you're managing that you can put tags in here to make it easier to find those things you could put business names as part of your tags um, I don't have that issue so I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm just gonna hit create droplet this takes maybe a minute um, just because it's also installing the application normally if you just create a, a DigitalOcean droplet it, it takes no time, I mean 30 seconds or less to, to build up a, a simple droplet. This is getting built with Ubuntu 18.04 and it's going to install the information, all of the things that we need for the Rocket Chat server. So I'm going to let this finish and then I'll come back. The droplet is created and you can see it right here. So I'm going to copy the IP address and I'm going to open up my terminal. SSH, and then this is going to create it as root automatically. Um, I highly recommend if you do this for production again, create a non-root user who has pseudo privileges, and then build all this stuff from that. But when you use the click, the one-click app, it, it does it as root. So I'm going to paste in that IP address and hit enter. It's going to ask me if I want to connect. Yes, I do. And then it's going to ask me for the password. So I put that over here, and I'll get it, and I'll put it in. Hit enter. It's going to ask me for that password one more time when I've successfully connected. Now you can see there's some instructions here that we'll want to come back to about how to get things set up properly for Rocket Chat. Um, it's not much, but I'm going to put in that other password. And then I'm going to put in my new password that I want. And this should always be a strong password. And we'll talk about some password managers in a future video as well. All right, so I'm in. So first thing you want to do is just make sure everything's up to date on your Ubuntu system. So we're gonna do sudo apt update, and we'll do ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade dash y. So this will actually go out and get all the packages that are available and upgrade them. Uh, so we'll just give that a minute to run. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. So now we need to scroll back up to these instructions that came up when we first logged in. So it tells you about Rocket Chat here. Um, and then it says basically to configure your Rocket Chat service, you need to edit this file. So lib systemd system rocket chat service. So this is a service that runs a systemd so that if you reboot your, your server, Rocket Chat comes right back up and starts running whenever the system's rebooted and it's got a network connection. So the one thing that they say you have to change is the root URL, which is smart because this is going to be running on localhost, which doesn't help you. You want this to run either at your domain name. So again, you know, rocketchat.mycompany.com or chat.mycompany.com, whatever you name it and forward it here, you would want to put that in as the root URL. Or the IP address is fine, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to type in nano, which is just an editor. If you prefer Emacs or Vim, that's fine. Nano is simple. So I'm going to use it. And we're going to go down to this line here where you see Mongo URL, environment equals Mongo URL. And you'll see it's actually multiple um, different so there's oplog URL and then root URL. Here's the one that we want to change. So I'm going to change this part that says localhost to be my IP address. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to paste that in there and then I'm going to hit control O to save it. Control X 
and then let's see, did they tell us how to restart this service? No, but it's usually the same commands. So we'll, okay, then we're gonna run this. System CTL reload. And then we'll do that command again. And it restarts the service. And now we should be able to reach Rocket Chat at that IP address. And then we have to do colon 3000. Ah, here we go. I don't know why I had to put the HTTP. Chrome's acting a little bit weird there. So, we've got Rocket Chat installed. Now you have to do a little bit of setup. So you want to be the admin, so you don't want to wait too long to do this if it's out on the open internet. So the first thing you want to do is just enter a little bit of information. And I'll enter my username here and my email. We'll do... And I'll put in a password. Continue. So now it's going to ask if I want to save this. No, I don't right now. So you can fill this out if you want to. Um, I mean, you need to fill it out, but you can fill it out properly, or you can just say what the point is. So this is community. I'm going to call that the same thing. And I don't know what to put in here, but we'll put media. And I'll put 11 to 50 people. And we'll go down here and find the United States, since that's where I am. And we'll put in fixedilrail.com. Continue. Site name. Now, you don't have to pick the language, but I'm going to pick English. Uh, public community, private team. Now, this is the part that's interesting. So, if you register with the Rocket Chat services, then you can use the push notifications and things like that built into their service for your mobile application pointed to your server. So, so this is a really great option. But, if you prefer to have a private server completely separate from them, you can do that. It's just warning you that you'll have to recompile those mobile applications and things to make them work with your private server properly. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna leave it on this option for now. And it says we're ready to use our workspace. So I'm just gonna click go. And here we are. So first thing up, it gives you a, a happy, hello, welcome kind of thing. So administration, layout, home, body, and, and we can, so we can go do a lot of things in administration. I kind of want to talk about the UI first. Um, so this is asking me, uh, this is my Bitwarden. This is my password manager. So I'll go through that uh, application at another time, but it's a great application. All right. so. First things first, just up here at the top, you can see that it's me logged in. I don't have an avatar yet. I can go I can go set that up as a user um, and you can set different statuses. So I'm online, busy, away. So my account, um, you can go click on this and you can actually go and set up a whole lot of things here for your account. So there's lots of, of different preferences, um, you know, user presence. So let people know when I'm here or not, enable auto away, true messages so there's lots of settings here that you can go through as a person okay um, so show room counter on the sidebar I don't need to see the room counter it's not gonna be that big of a thing but you might want to if you had a lot of rooms and a lot of channels set up and then highlights so you can highlight certain words in this application which is kind of awesome if there's certain things you're concerned about or certain things you want to see you can make those things highlighted inside of the application in the chat and channels which is really a cool feature actually um, so you can do sound notifications, you can do message notifications, and so many other things. And you can get your own data, you can export your data. Um, it's pretty pretty cool. So I'm going to say save. And you can see my preferences were saved. And it comes back out. So now I'm going to go to my profile. So here I can change my avatar to be something better than just this B for my first name. Um, you can set up all kinds of information. You can change your password. So pretty, pretty basic, right? Um, so you can log on, log out from other login locations. This is kind of a nice feature. So if you log in on your laptop, you, you left it at work and you come home and you're logged in and, and you're like, oh man, I'm still logged in on my laptop. You can log out from that laptop from there. So that's, that's a nice feature as well. Security, you can enable two factor authentication, which is amazing. I always suggest two factor authentication if you have the opportunity to do that. And then personal access tokens you can also generate so that you can access these uh, different kinds of accounts. 
So I'm going to close down the My Account. So here we have the option to change how the sidebar looks. So you can say a little bit bigger. You can go to very condensed so it's really thin. So if you have lots of channels, this might be a, a really good way to see them. Um, or you can go back to medium, which is what it's defaulted as. Um, here, so you can sort different ways for the sidebar. You can create a new ch chat or discussion, and then you get some options here for administration. So this little bot, um, this little three dot stack, you can click on administration. Inside of administration is just bonkers. So first is info, but everything you do from here is how you can make this really customized and really set up as your own system. Um, I, I want to go through all of it, but it's so much that it's almost it just gonna it's gonna take too long to go through it all. I would say set this up and, and run through it yourself and see what you see there and see all of the things that you that you kind of like um, as far as settings. If you have questions, ping me and, and I can always do a video about specific things. But I mean, you can set up, you know, you can search for rooms and set up rooms and remove rooms from here. And users, you can monitor users, set up users, change users from here. Um, so it's really great and, it, and it's really easy to, to actually do. So custom sounds, custom emoji, which is really cool. Um, in Slack at my job in my professional life. They allow custom emojis. Um, a few people abused it a little bit and put some things that were not very um, polite. So be careful when you allow this and, and check these things and, and you know give a little bit of leeway. People don't always think with their head and they should. So um, just be forgiving. Federation is pretty awesome so you can federate to other instances of uh, Rocket Chat. So if you have multiple sites that aren't connected together but you want to have rocket chat available for each of those things and you're not running on outside servers um, you can federate those servers if you do a bit of network uh, work to, to allow that to happen um, so that's that's really awesome integrations so there's lots of integrations for this um, zapier is one that, that allows you to do a lot of different things um, but but there's actually so there's a um, so you can do a new integration so you can say incoming webhook out, outgoing webhook so these, this is where you can build up a lot of things. So if I say incoming webhook, then it allows you to, to give those webhooks names and, and kind of build that out yourself. So this is kind of, this is kind of awesome. Um, if you go to apps down here, there's also apps that are already made for this. And there's the marketplace. So whether we click there or we click here, you can go to the app marketplace and you can see the apps that are already built um, for this. So, so there's quite a few that are, that are very popular. So Dropbox, Giphy, GitLab. I mean, there's just some really cool ones here. Um, Jitsi slash command. So this lets you set up a Jitsi meeting. Um, if you're not using Jitsi meet, I'll go through that one as well. But it lets you set up a video conference basically from inside of, uh, uh, of Rocket Chat and use Jitsi to do that. It's really cool. Um, the out of office autoresponder, which is kind of cool. You can do polls, you can search, you can do more GIFs. Uh, you can do a WebEx meeting instead of a Jitsi meeting. And, and so many uh, just different little apps that are here. But you can also set up your own apps. I mean, you can create app integrations if that's something that you need and something that you want. You don't see it here, which is awesome. Once you get through that part, there's even more settings down here. And I mean, really, this look at all of this. It's, it's crazy how much there is here um, when you really start looking at this. There's a Slack bridge. There's the setup wizard. There's just so much. There's SMS. There's thread setup. There's... I mean, just so many things that you can do. Video conference setup, um, website integration. So the video, video conference setup, you can do it with a big blue button, which is open source, and I'll go through that one of these days. And Jitsi, again, which is open source, and we'll go through that. Um, so when you set these things up, you can kind of set up, you know, if you have your own big blue button site, you can set that up in the same way with if you run your own Jitsi site, you can set those up as well. Um, so just so much that you can do with this software, and I'm, I'm just so impressed with it. So I'm going to close down administration and I'm going to go into the channel. So it shows that I joined this channel and as you create channels, you'll see that, that people can join those channels. So let's create a channel and we'll make it a public channel and it's a read only channel. Um, um, the channel name, so you just give it any kind of name you want. I don't know if there's a limit to how many characters you can have, but I'm just going to call this um, my my separate chat room and you can invite users so if you already have users in mind that you want for this channel you can start just just typing them in here and it'll look and I don't have any other users right now but I'll create the channel now it shows up here 
So as you create channels, people can go search for those channels, they can see the channel list, they can join those channels. Um, it's not, not difficult to do. This is my first message. And you can see it shows up right here in the channel. And then you have actions you can even do on the messages. So you can start a discussion, you can follow this message, reply in a thread, which means kind of take it off to a side conversation. Um, you can reply in a direct message to this person, so more of a private chat. You can quote this message, you can get the link, you can copy it, you can edit it, you can pin it so that it's always kind of up at the top. You can star it because it's a favorite and you want to go look at it later. You can report it for abuse and of course you can delete the message if you're the owner of the message, I imagine. So the cool thing about chat systems is chatting. So I'm going to copy my um, URL here and I'm going to open up a separate browser. So I'm going to open up Firefox. That one's running in Chrome. And I'm going to go to that URL, and I'm going to create a new user. So this is what it looks like after you've kind of done the initial admin setup, and they'll say register a new account, and they'll type in a name, and I'll call this, what does this want? Um, email, so testbob at testbob. Hope I'm not creating spam for somebody. Um, they want a password and they want the password a second time pretty normal registration and I'm gonna say don't save and they want you to pick a username so I'm gonna call this tester Bob so now you hear the sound if you hear the sound through my headphones I hear it I don't know um, tester Bob joined tester Bob can see the general channel he doesn't know that this other channel exists yet but he can go and search for channels so if he knows my separate channel exists he can come over and join this channel and he can say hey I'm finally here and you can see it shows up over on the other window so from here I can reply great to see you glad you made it and of course this is chat chat is pretty basic it never changes much um, oops went full screen there um, let me get this back in view and then tester Bob can reply um, I was looking at the documents you sent and they don't make sense got a minute talk of course I will see that and I can reply sure now, I want to get his attention and make sure he sees my reply. So I can say, add tester Bob. Sure, just let me know when. Then tester Bob gets a notification on his side that tells him, hey, you just got directly messaged by somebody about this. So he can reply. Okay, I see this, sounds good. I can click on Tester Bob. I can actually click over here and you'll see that I've got a lot of different options here on this, on this same message that we talked about a while ago. So I could delete it because I'm the admin of the system. Okay, um, I could report it for abuse, same thing, but I've also got emojis. And I can just tell Tester Bob, you know, I've, I've got it. I've got time right now, thumbs up. So he knows, yep, we're good to go. Now what I want to do, gave Bob the thumbs up, I want to go and start a private conversation with Bob. So I'm going to take him over to a private discussion. Say, Okay, tester Bob got a notification that he's got a new message and he can jump over here to the private conversation with me. Now we're not junking up the, the channel, which is great. Tester Bob's never looked at the general channel, so he doesn't realize that that message is there. Now he's back here and he's looking and, and working with me to get this going. Now, I wanna go back as the admin and show you one of those features we talked about. So I'm gonna go into administration. Ah, okay, I didn't have it. So. I'm going to enable Jitsi first. So I'm going to go way down here to the bottom to video conferencing. I'm going to go to Jitsi and I'm going to enable it. Now, 
once I've enabled it, I want to make sure that it has all of the right information. It's going to have Rocket Chat as the room prefix. You can change this, of course. I can change this to my Rocket Chat. And then I can set SSL equals to true, always open in a new window. I might want that. Enabling channels, yes. I want channels to be able to also create those rooms. And there's a Chrome extension ID here I'm not going to mess with. And reset section settings, I'm not going to mess with that. So I'm going to save my changes. They're saved. So now I'm going to go back, I'm going to close administration. Now when I go up here to my menu, you'll see this option that says video chat. When I click on this option, it's going to start my video camera. So I'm going to click here. It's going to ask do I want to start a video call. Yes, I do. But so it's going to create this Jitsi meeting and it's going to show this long thread of a of a URL up here. It's it's really just a, a big thing that says, hey, this should be pretty private because hopefully nobody's going to guess this and type it in. Now, if I switch back over to Tester Bob, he's going to see that link pop up that says, I want to chat with him. Now, I don't know what's going to happen when I click on this from inside my computer, um, and I'm doing it from Firefox. So I don't know if Firefox is going to let me do this, but it says, do you want to join this chat? Yes, I do. So it's going to ask for permissions. I'm going to say allow and it's going to open that up. And now we're both inside of this chat room. I'm actually running the chat room from two, two different machines, so my camera turned off. Um, or actually, I'm looking at Bob, Bob's looking at me. So if I go back to Firefox, um, Bob can't actually see my video because it's being used, so Firefox is giving me this error down here that says, hey, something else has the video camera locked up, which you totally expect. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to close down the chat on Bob's side and I can leave the chat on my side and Jitsi wants to know how did they do which is fine but that's just built in so so all I had to go, do was go turn it on and set a, a simple setting and it's done um, so it's an easy way to have a video conference with somebody one-on-one -on -one, but I can also now do that from inside the channels so I'm here having this conversation now if I do it from here anybody in the channel is gonna see that link and they're gonna be invited to that video so again I'll do it so that may be something you want to turn off, something you want to turn off. Just depends on your company. So again, starts up just like you expect. Here I am. I'm going to turn this back off. Jitsi wants to know how they did. Did great. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to go and close that and come back to the chat. So setting this up really took about two minutes time when you when you really consider it. Now, DigitalOcean super great love DigitalOcean the one click app is amazing it lets me get in and test this out um, but you can see where, where the power is in something like this um, having it internal to your company to me is, is a huge thing um, Slack is great Slack lets you join other workspaces that's awesome if you want to create other workspaces inside of Rocket Chat you can do that it's not something where you have to keep it all just on other people's plates you can change the whole look and feel of Rocket Chat, by the way. You can turn this thing dark with white text. You can, you know, night mode, day mode, blue mode, red mode, whatever makes you happy, um, which is awesome. I think that's a, a great feature. So that's Rocket Chat in a nutshell. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'll put more videos out there. I'm going to try to do weekly videos. That is that is my goal. And I want to make sure that I'm giving you information and, and knowledge about open source software that's out there that you can use. It won't always be server-based software. Sometimes it'll be desktop applications. Um, sometimes it'll be server things that don't even have a front end, but they're really cool for doing some really cool stuff. So I'm excited about those things and I'm ready to show you those things. Thanks for watching.